This is a super basic welding practice coupon, and I'm gonna show you how to do some advanced TIG welding techniques where you can turn a boring practice plate like this into these, then these, and then into this here. This is some real next level stuff that I'm excited to show you. What I'm going to do is lay out my plate here. I'm dividing it into eight equal squares. So they'll be one and a half inches in measurement. And then after cutting them out, I'm going to cut them again across the diagonal to make them triangles. The key is to cut these as precise as you can. If you have little spots that aren't straight, then you're gonna have to adjust later to get a good fit with the project when tacking it together. Now, of course, after cutting all these pieces out, we have to clean up the edges. You can see I'm buzzing them flat on the belt sander to remove any wobbly edges from my cutting. Get them as flat as you can. They don't have to be completely perfect, but the flatter and more straight you can get them, the better. I'm then going to deburr them all to make sure that the rag is gone and the edges are smooth. And then of course, after I'm thoroughly cleaning them completely with acetone. Oh, and by the way, to make these things, you're gonna need 18 of these triangles or 18 pieces. Obviously doing the math on this, I'm not a genius, but this requires nine squares. Cutting them from one coupon like this only gets you eight squares. So wait a second, I guess we need one more. So maybe you need this one and then an extra square, whatever. <laughs> now here is where our advanced TIG welding stuff begins, ready? That's right, the advanced stuff starts even now with the preparation. And we are gonna get really advanced with this right away. Now I've made this project out of paper first so I can essentially mock it up and demonstrate a few things for you here right now. Looking at it here, you can see all the areas that are going to be welded here. Now looking at it here, let me ask you, how would you go about wire brushing all the joints for your welding passes? This is a very important and very valid question. Would you just scratch away all crazy trying to prepare all your edges that you're about to weld. Unfortunately, with this joint configuration, you're not actually going to be able to reach into some of the corners with your wire brush. It'll kind of bonk into other stuff and it won't get everything scrubbed the way you want it to be. And today, like we talked about, we are talking about advanced techniques. So let's get advanced here. When I was doing projects like this back in the day, when I was doing production welding, I was doing all kinds of high end, really nice TIG stuff. And I did it for 20 years, I might add. My advanced aluminum thinking began begins at this phase here. Thinking about the joint after it's assembled would give me the hint that I would start to encounter problems with preparing things, perhaps with wire brushing or something like that. Essentially, I would identify that this might be a challenge ahead of time before I even started putting it together. Again, my wire brush would be bonking into corners and scratching all over and looking stupid. So I would actually start preparing these with my wire brush before I started assembling it. Now, let me ask you this. Would you just grab your pieces and just scrub away and get them all wire brushed? brush like this? Heck no, my friends, that is not advanced. Let's get silly on a high level here and do these the way a professional would. Pretending that these are not going to get painted and scrutinized under a close eye after they're finished. Take your ruler like this and you are going to use it when you are wire brushing each edge carefully. And we are even going to plan specifically which edges and how many edges need to be prepared. As you can see with the mock-up, six of these triangles actually don't get welded on this edge here. So I'm gonna take these six pieces and prepare them separately. I'm only gonna prepare the edges that are about to be welded. The rest of these pieces are gonna get prepared for welding on all three edges. And then I'm gonna separate these and keep them organized. Now looking at these after they have been brushed and prepared properly, you can see that these look super organized. They look mint. I'm serious people. When I was doing welding production and doing instruction full time, I was able to show people how to take details like this and get some incredible looking stuff. And you can see as I'm tacking each section of this together, I'm not overfilling at all. I'm just using a touch of filler material and making sure it sits exactly where I want. Looking at these here, they look absolutely clean. Don't put your tacking anywhere stupid like in the middle of one of these passes. You're gonna have to go over it and it's gonna make a bump later. That's dumb. You want them strategically placed where you are going to do your start stops and putting them on the edges of areas like this is gonna help to add a little bit of material. This is gonna help to prevent overheating near the ends. As you start to assemble these pieces together, you may see that you're gonna end up with a little bit of gap here and there. Do not make the mistake of tacking these together and locking them in place before taking care of this. Check this out. You might need to skim a little bit of material off of a few pieces. I recommend doing it and spreading it out over a few or even all of the pieces. Leaving everything for the last piece of the puzzle can leave you with one piece that is really mismatched compared to the other. Spread the material that you need to remove out over a few different pieces. And this is how you can really get the alignment that you need and keep your adjustments inconspicuous. Now that we have 
all these pieces tacked together and ready to go individually, it's time to put them together. And again, think about where you're gonna put each tack. I'm gonna place them all on the edge. Remember, just like I said, having these placed near the end of these passes is going to help bolster the filler material. This helps to prevent overheating immensely. Treat each one of these as if they are an actual start to every pass that you're doing. You're gonna get a real sense of how things are going when you go to run the real thing. Break down and scrutinize each tack that you do as well. Make sure that the material is settling exactly where you want it to with each one. And now here we go, just practicing some dry runs and actually kind of getting the feel that these passes are gonna be really small actually. I wanted to take all this out in a little more substantial fashion so I'm starting to think about making a couple squares out of each coupon instead. So here we go. Cut the coupons again. Sand the coupons again. Deburr and clean them again. Wire brush everything one more time. And let's put everything together exactly as we did with the little ones. Okay, now we're back where we were before. I am stoked to get going with this one. Seriously, people, if you have any experience with TIG welding, looking at this thing, is your mouth just absolutely watering looking at this all put together? Look how fun this is about to be and how cool this is going to look when it's done. Done. I am pumped to get into this one. So before we get going, here is the next thing that real advanced TIG welders do. And again, people, do you see how much advanced stuff actually happens before you step on the pedal to initiate your first arc? That's right, not only do we do a lot of planning with the preparation, but we do a ton of planning with the welding itself. Some people leave comments in my videos saying, enough talking, get to the welding already. But this is not stuff that you're gonna find in a 60 second video on Instagram. These are real tips and real things that I had to learn the hard way as a professional doing the trade. Now, looking at this thing here, tell me, where would you start welding? Which ones would you do first? Which direction would you head with each one? Every weld ends with a final dab and a button of filler. Where are you gonna put your buttons? This is actually a time when you can stop, take some time to reflect and be a little bit creative. And this can become something a little bit subjective to somebody's tastes. I love symmetry with the projects that I do. I love showboating the work that I do, I'm not bragging, but I love putting things together in a way that they can almost look like a mirror image sometimes. This is what I'm gonna do here, check this out. Watch this diagram. First, I'm gonna start out with my outside corner work. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on the outside passes and weld uphill and stop at the tip of each triangle section. Now, let me ask you something. Why would I start with the ones on the outside instead of the ones on the inside? Anybody? I'm starting with these ones simply because the welding on the outside edges is going to heat up the most and the fastest. The stuff on the inside has more material surrounding it. So doing these ones around the outside first are gonna be done before the entire thing gets smoking hot. And I'm also gonna bounce around the project. I'll do a weld on one side and then I'll flip over and do a weld on the other side. Basically just bounce around the project, you get the idea. With anything like this, spread your heat around so you're not working only in one tiny area at a time. This is gonna help with uh, distortion as well as your overall heat control with your welding. Next, I'm gonna start each outside corner going up from the middle. This is gonna meet the other pass on the top of each triangle. This is where I'm gonna leave the button right on the tip of each section. And doing this across all sections is gonna create a lot of really cool looking symmetry. Then after that, I'm gonna do the fillet passes. These are gonna start on the outside again. I just explain this. Why would I do this? If you're paying attention, you know it's because pointing your heat towards the center is going to help you out a ton. If you start from the center and point your heat towards the ends, as you approach the end of each pass, it's going to be absolutely spicy hot. And these edges are going to overheat. I'm going to take all the heat and I'm going to push it towards the middle. And this is going to converge in the center with a nice orderly looking button. And again, looking at the diagram here, look at the symmetry. Come on now. Not only have we taken the time to prepare each of these pieces for the welding that's going to happen on the project, but now we're doing the same thing with our weld directions and the sequencing. This is not amateur shit. This is stuff that real professionals think about and plan extensively. And even doing it here for a practice exercise, look at how much experience this is going to give you and how much it's gonna teach you just doing this practice exercise. Let's set up the machine and weld this puppy out. I am using the Everlast 230 Typhoon. This machine has a ton of customizable settings. I'm really gonna fine tune my gas levels for this, my balance as well, as well as my frequency. My balance is gonna be fine tuned so that I can really really have a small ball preparation on the tungsten tip. This is gonna help me to get good cleaning action and good control with my arc. And it's also gonna help to keep the tip of the tungsten in really good shape. I'm gonna crank my frequency up quite a bit on the machine. This is gonna help to keep the arc cone narrow and focused. I personally prefer to do this over using a pulse setting on the machine. I just need to make sure that I 
I babysit and keep things orderly and organized as I'm welding. Again, I'm starting on the outside just like I described. This one is done with a bit of an uphill here and I'm making sure that I use adequate heat and adequate filler material. You do not want to let things overfill. This is gonna block penetration into the base material, but you also wanna make sure that you use enough filler. If you don't use enough, the heat input is going to increase rapidly, especially going uphill. And if this happens, you are going to cook this project very quickly and it's going to look like trash. Again, as I'm working here, I'm bouncing around from side to side, really letting my heat disperse as I work around it. And you can also take breaks and let the piece cool down after each stage as this project is done. This might help you a lot if you're just getting going with some more advanced stuff like this. Finishing the passes on the outside, I am pretty happy with the results. I might tweak my settings a little bit here and there, but for the most part, I just want my machine running good and consistent and clean. Now it's time to work on the passes in the center coming up to meet at the top of each section. This one's a bit of a funky angle just because you have the other pieces to work around. But again, if you are making sure you can see clearly your hands are positioned comfortably and properly, and you reflect on the work that you've done so far, doing these ones here should absolutely pretty much feel the same as the ones on the outside. When I'm welding towards the top of each one, I want the button to be centered right on the top. And again, as you finish each one of these, just reflect on the results that you see after each pass. The goal is for you to reflect on the feedback that you see as you go. Not just look at it after you finish the whole thing and wish you did some stuff differently. Take breaks. We're working in sections on this one. Make adjustments as you need to. Again, advanced tips. Now that these guys are all lined up and connected with their little buddies on the other side, I'm super pumped with the results that I see so far. Look at how clean things look as well as with the cleaning action and the wire brushing. Come on. Again, with all the details and planning that we've done before, this is not looking like amateur work in no way. Now again, for the fillet passes, we are going to start on the outside and work our way in. And the real key with these ones is to just make sure we are not overfilling with the filler material. The amount of filler material you are using needs to be matched carefully with the amount of heat that you are using. Again, make sure that you spread these out. Do one on one side and then the next on the opposite side. This is very important. This is going to heat up very quickly simply because we are starting right on the edge. And this thing theoretically still is warm from the passes previous to these ones. I'm making sure that I am ultra comfortable and I'm able to see clearly. My hands are positioned comfortably for each pass that I'm doing. And I'm making sure that I terminate in the middle, getting ready to finish up these all together with one final button. Now, as I run my final pass here, I'm just cruising in with the same consistency that I've been using so far. And then as I wrap up here, I'm washing over all the passes and connecting everything with one clean button and I am super pumped with this one. Let's check out the results. Again, look at the welding directions and how much all the planning paid off. Between the preparation that we did earlier with our cleaning and wire brushing, and then planning all of our directions and sequencing, look how good this thing looks. We can see perfect cleaning action with every single pass that we did. Everything looks really organized. And flipping it over, we can also see penetration has occurred with all the outside corner work we did. If I were to get crazy, I would also prep these and plan a way that I could do better uh, penetration on the fillet joints as well. But for what we did here on a practice exercise, this is pretty insane. And trust me, me. If you have never tried anything like this exercise before, it's going to blow your mind. And you know what? For good measure, let's weld out the little one as well. Screw it. This one being a little smaller gives a ton of different types of challenges to deal with, more so in the category of heat management. But with that one, if you're careful and you do extensive planning, you can make that one look fantastic as well. So if you want to make a project like this out of a simple practice coupon, go for it. I have other free workbooks as well as free classes and full courses on my website. Go Go get welding at a high level. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. I am Dusty James, Phil and Chill. We'll talk soon. Peace.